Hello everyone, Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. In this video, I will be taking a look at the Battle of Procyon 5. This is a PvE space queue that was added with the Agents of Yesterday expansion. And I'm sure you're all saying, Parallel, what are you doing? This queue has been out for over a month now. Uh, what's taking you so long? Well, uh, the truth is, I have been grinding so much on my Temporal Agent character here that uh, I really have not had a chance to do the new PvE space queues. And I was actually waiting to um, upgrade my ship enough and upgrade my weapons and gear enough to get to a point where I was actually, you know, uh, ready to do uh, space space queues. So I finally got to that point and I actually did get uh, to play the Battle of Procyon 5 a couple of times now. So I thought I'd do a playthrough uh, with the video here and give a few tips and uh, things that I learned in the runs that I've done so far. Alright, so before I jump into the queue, um, as I mentioned, I have been grinding away on my uh, temporal agent character here, the 23rd century captain, and uh, I thought I'd give a couple quick tips here while I am uh, here on the Krenum research station. This is, you know, if your fleet has the uh, research lab. Um, there are a few things you can do here that will help you uh, grind out your um, duty officer uh, duty officer schools and your uh, R&D schools. So um, there is actually a duty officer mission you can get from this character uh, right here that will give you some pretty decent XP. I actually already have the mission here in progress. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Applied uh, Space-Time Manipulation Tier 3. Now, you can see it gives some, a good amount of uh, science and engineering XP, which is nice. So it's, uh, and it also gives you a uh, research XP bonus pool, which is another nice little bonus. So it helps you grind out your uh, R&D schools and also gives you some science and engineering XP for your uh, duty officer schools, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, this is the tier three version. Um, as I said, uh, my fleet does have the tier three research lab, so depending on what your fleet has, uh, this might be a different, uh, different mission there. But another thing you can do is come over here and talk to this guy, and you could do a a uh, fleet research daily mission from him. As you can see, I've also already done this today. Um, it does have a 20 hour cooldown. But this daily mission, there's actually, when you when you select it, there's actually one for each research school. Um, so I've put my R&D tab here. If you do this mission, uh, it actually gives you a lot of R&D experience. And uh, unfortunately, I, yeah, it doesn't let me check it out, but it does give you almost as much as one of these daily, uh, one of the daily bonus research missions you can do. So that's just a quick tip for helping out. You can do this, you know, once a day, and uh, it really helps grind out your R&D experience for your schools. And it has a couple nice bonuses as well. The, the mission itself rewards some of the blue um, R&D materials, which can be uh, quite useful if you're building your own tech upgrades. So just a couple tips there, just to help you grind out your R&D a little bit faster, because um, it is a very slow process. You can see I finally got my science up to rank 15, which unlocks the, um, uh, what's it called? Particle manipulator trait very very useful that was kind of my first thing that I focused on but now I'm working on beams and ground weapons and it just takes as you I'm sure you know a lot of time to uh, upgrade your R&D schools so a couple missions here that can help so there's the one duty officer mission there and then the research mission over there in the Krenum uh, fleet research lab all right so yeah just a couple uh, quick tips there now before I jump into the queue, I thought I'd also quickly show what ship I will be flying here. Um, I, will, I would like to do an actual full build video on this ship in the future, uh, but for now I just uh, thought I would show, just so you're aware of what I will be flying for this particular mission. And it is in fact the Temporal Dreadnought Cruiser Tier 6. This is an absolutely fantastic ship. I'm absolutely loving it. 
It is incredibly powerful, and it is a very sciency based cruiser. Um, I think it combines kind of the boast, uh, best of both worlds of a science ship and a cruiser, thanks to its uh, really good temporal seating here. Uh, it has a commander. Uh, your commander engineering is actually also a temporal, and you also have a universal lieutenant that is also a temporal. So you're very flexible in what you can, um, uh, you know, what you can build as far as uh, temporal powers. In fact, I'm going to switch this one out for this mission. Um, recursive shearing is a very good temporal ability for single target damage, but for this particular mission, I think I'm going to go with timeline collapse, which is kind of like a mini grav well. Um, and it's just uh, it's just very nice. I really love the temporal uh, temporal abilities. Uh, the temporal school that they added with Agents of Yesterday is fantastic. The whole specialization tree is great. The abilities you can get for your uh, bridge officers are great. So it's um, uh, yeah, and it just really fits well into this cruiser. It makes it feel like a very sciency based cruiser, and it just works well. Um, so you can see here the bridge officers that I'm using. I do have two. Um, Romulans in the tactical seats uh, for SRO and then I do have the uh, Mr. Potato Head which is the uh, the uh, hierarchy uh, uh, hierarchy DOF you can get from the Delta uh, Delta Quadrant missions um, I'll just quickly show my skills that I'm using I'm actually considering a respec because the build that I'm using has such high recharge uh, reduction that I don't really need this tactical readiness anymore. I th thinking about putting the be points would be better spent elsewhere. As far as specializations, I am of course using the temporal operative, which I have maxed out. This tree is a lot of fun. Um, it's actually quite effective too, as far as damage goes. So it uh, it works very very well. Um, almost right up there with Intel. Uh, particularly this Entropic Rider is a fantastic scaling DPS ability. Does a really good job uh, in keeping your DPS up and a lot of neat other little abilities in here as well. And for the secondary I will be using Strategist. Um, the particular build that I'm using on the, the uh, Temporal Dreadnought Cruiser here is, uh, it is more of an aggro based build so I will be using um, Attrition Warfare to reduce my cooldowns whenever I do a, a hull heal. Uh, that's this is a very powerful ability for any if you're going to be doing any uh, aggro tanking. Helps a lot. Um, uh, back to the actual ship itself. Um, I am running a, a full set of uh, Coalition Disruptor Beam Arrays here. Um, as far as my space set, I'm still using the Aegis uh, set and the uh, just a Kobali warp core. Um, I'm very much working, uh, looking forward to getting the Iconian four-piece going here. Um, that is something I'm working towards right now. You can see my reputations. I do have all of them maxed except for Temporal, but I'm holding off on getting the Iconian set because uh, um, if you're uh, if you're aware, one of the special rewards you get for being a Temporal agent is. Um, it's a very good reward you get for when you have um, gotten all of your reputations maxed, all nine of them. And I'm trying to find it here. Where is it? Reputation. Yep. So once you get all nine of your reputations tier five, it has a very special bonus here where whenever you craft, whenever you do a fleet pro, or not a fleet, whenever you do a reputation project, uh, the reward from that project will be at ultra rare mark 13 whereas normally it's just very rare mark 12 so that that rarity increase is incredibly valuable and it'd be really awesome to have a full set of ultra rare uh, uh, iconian four piece space set once i complete this so i'm kind of holding off for that so i don't have to that'll save a lot of dilithium and tech upgrades uh, to get that rarity increase so, but that means I do have to hold off until the uh, temporal uh, temporal reputation is maxed out. That will be probably a few more weeks still, uh, just because um, I was able to max these other ones out so fast because my other characters have already maxed these out. So I was able to provide the um, the officer training uh, coupon that you can get to double your uh, reputation gain for those reputations. But this one has not been out long enough where my other characters have maxed it yet. So. So this character still has to grind this one out, 
but I will be using the Iconian set for sure once that comes out. The, I've been very happy with the Coalition Disruptor Beams. The Cryptic recently changed these to bind to account instead of bind to character, which immediately triggered me to want to buy these because uh, I very much prefer weapons that are bound to account because I have so many alts. Um, and I do like to share these across alts. But uh, they have been performing extremely well. If you're not familiar with Coalition Disruptors, they are a uh, lockbox um, lockbox based weapon, which is why I don't have pen mod on here. Uh, their mods are not perfect. They were as good as I can get, but these are very expensive weapons. So um, the main thing here that everyone likes about Coalition Disruptors is the uh, the proc on these is a minus 20 disruptor resistance rating for 30 seconds. So it's a it procs a very very large uh, you know resistance debuff on the enemy for all disruptor you know for all, all their damage resistance to disruptors and these do disruptor damage so um, very nice weapons um, I will be using the three piece set that you get from the three temporal 31st century ships um, I think it's a fantastic set I've been having a lot of fun with these. I will show them in the mission. Uh, Plasmonic Leech, I'm using three of the uh, Plasma Generating Weapon Signature Amplifiers. So basically uh, Plasma Exploders with plus aggro and uh, and uh, Exotic Particle Gen mod. And then finally just uh, Tactical Vulnerability Locators for Disruptors. So that is the build I will be using. Um, one thing I thought I would show that I did recently achieve here that if anyone is interested, I did recently get the improved critical systems trait. This is another reward from being a temporal agent. And uh, you can see here what that the improved version, what this actually gives is a two self 3% crit chance for 15 seconds and plus 15% crit severity for 15 seconds whenever you activate an emergency power uh, ability. And I am cycling emergency power to weapons and shields. So this should be up pretty much permanently. But in order to get this, you do have to, again, if you go back to your uh, temporal transponder, the achievement for this one is you have to complete all of the storylines. Um, even the Delta Quadrant one, which took for, oh, that took for absolutely forever. That particular storyline is just uh, padded with tons of patrol missions, and it took forever. Um, but yeah, but completing all of these storylines does get you the improved version of the trait. It is an account unlock, which is very nice. And it's honestly a pretty solid trait. I mean, it's a permanent, pretty much permanent, if you keep up your emergency power to weapons and shields. That's a 3% crit chance and a 50% crit severity. Um, I just like that it's just a generally good space trait as opposed to, I mean, a lot of other traits are better situationally better but this one is just kind of a nice general trait especially for uh, you know if you're a newer character you don't have a lot of other good traits this one is solid I mean 15% crit severity and 3% crit chance not bad um, but yeah you can see the other traits that I'm using here uh, emergency weapon cycle all hands on deck and improve feedback pulse because I will be using feedback pulse on this build um, all right, so yeah, that's enough of that. I will go into a full, a lot more detail when I do a build video of that ship. Let's go ahead and queue up for Battle of Procyon 5. Um, this is actually a really cool mission because you do get to see the Enterprise J, which was briefly shown in the, uh, if you ever saw the Enterprise TV show, uh, it was briefly shown there. Um, and if you go through some of the storylines, it does reference this as well. So it's a pretty cool cue. It kind of ties into the uh, episodes that were added with Agents of Yesterday. And I can go ahead and read it here. It says, Temporal fleets clash in the 26th century at Procyon 5 for the fate of the galactic timeline and join the fight of the ages. Um, this mission does have a cool little cutscene at the beginning, so I will uh, I will be quiet for that part so everyone can see. Um, and there are a few tips on this one. I will try to share as we go through. If you, especially if you're trying to complete the optionals, uh, the optionals are very difficult to to complete in a pickup group because they require some coordination. Um, 
So yeah, just be aware of that. They're they're very strict on the timing for the optionals, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't leave time for you to uh, just go around from portal to portal and close them one by one. You would have to, yeah, there has to be some coordination going on there to meet some of these optionals. But it is a it is a fun little queue. I, I did enjoy it quite a bit, um, and it does give you your uh, choice of marks. I will show the rewards at the end. All righty, here we go. And this is, uh, you know, I'm just queuing up here as random pickup group, um, so you never know how these go. Could be great, could be awful. Um, and this is definitely a mission where if you don't have a lot of DPS, uh, it could be very, very difficult and take a long time to close all these portals. But uh... the Battle of Procyon Five is underway. The crew of Enterprise J is preparing to destroy the command sphere but the enemy is sending reinforcements through time portals to stop them. What can we do to help? Simple. We need to shut down those portals and give Enterprise a clear shot or we're done. Understood. All right, so lots of portals here, and you can see we got a few more seconds here. It's a good time to start your fighters launching. Um, I will be putting on an offensive configuration for my... Temple Dreadnought Cruiser. This is the cool, unique abilities that the 31st century ships get. And we'll be putting on aggro as well. Now, one of the optionals is to close all of these portals. You can see them all here. Sphere builders are targeting the Enterprise. Moving to intercept at full impulse. Here's the Enterprise J. Very cool. But one of the optionals, see, you only have a minute and 40 seconds to close all of these. Which is honestly very difficult here. Now, whenever I'm in a pickup group, of course, everyone in the pickup group heads right to the first portal. Mayday! Core breach imminent! Abandoned ship! Oh, and as you can see, these portals are very frustrating. These are the portals that, if anything, so much as breathes on you, if a ship, like, looks in your direction, it's going to interrupt you're closing That's up the, portal. of the portals keep going actually we're doing really good um, yep and <laughs> so you get interrupted a lot in this which basically means it comes down to a complete DPS race if you can if you can vape the ships coming out of these portals um, then uh, I mean, you have to vape them fast, or they're just going to keep interrupting you, and interrupting you, and interrupting you. Did I actually get that one done? It looks like I did close it right before those warped in. Wow, we did it. The Tox Utat is ready. Fire! I want an Enterprise J with a Tox Utat beam. <laughs> Go around like one shot and everything. Destroyed. We did it. It's... Wait! The timeline is changing! No. Uh -oh. You're right. Whoa, where'd you go, Daniels? The Battle of Procyon 5 is underway. The crew of Enterprise J is preparing to destroy the command sphere. But the enemy is sending reinforcements through time portals to stop them. You're this right. This seems familiar. Only this time the sphere builders have new allies. The Krenum. We still ah. need to close so that's the how this queue works. Basically, once you close all the portals, wait, no, bad idea. Um, ships inbound, moving to intercept and engage. Yeah, once you close all the portals, timeline alters, and the Krenim fleet is attacking the Enterprise. We can't afford to lose her. And you basically have to do it all over again. And in this case here. Um, you also have to protect the Enterprise. Some ships will break off and head towards the Enterprise, so you have to protect her. Um, no, I just got teleported. Uh, yeah, these... Uh, whoa, whoa, I'm going all over the place. Yeah, the Krenim ships and the um, 
sphere builder ships have all kinds of sciency powers. They do all kinds of nasty things to you, like teleporting you around. Okay, let's see if I can. No. See, that crown warp ship came in in range and interrupted me. Mayday! Call breach imminent! Abandoned ship! Man, man, shut it down. Ha! <sighs> Interrupted again. So yeah, these portals, this is like the Mirror Universe event, alright? It's like if anything touches you, you're interrupted. If the enemies have Beamfire at will or anything, it's like, forget it, you're, you're never going to get the portal closed. That's why DPS, it, it really is almost just a DPS race. Because, um... You just have to take them down fast. You just you, there's no way you're going to be taking uh, be able to close a portal when you're under fire. But this is actually a fantastic group. Um, the group is doing a good job of spreading out to all the portals and closing them. Fire. And here we go again. This is shot number two. So, I mean, that's the main tip here. If you want to, to uh, pass the Excellent optional. Work. If you want. Oh. Wait! Timeline change imminent! Uh oh, Daniels is getting distorted. The Battle of Procyon 5 is underway. The <laughs> He's crew not of looking Enterprise so good. J is. Wait. I feel it too. Something right. is changing. Scanning. The not cool have joined the fight this time. All right, not cool this time. I'm gonna do the same kind of thing over here and try to spread out. Bad idea. Credit ships inbound. Moving to stay with Enterprise. Yes. Let's follow these guys down. Now these ones, I'm gonna go ahead and open up here with my three consoles and try to DPS these guys down as fast as possible. Going for tactical fleet. Enemy forces are attacking Enterprise. Protect her if you can. Okay, Enterprise looks clear. Um, uh, a few things are attacking her. Um, but that's the other th optional is to keep the Enterprise. Uh, the Nakul are going for Enterprise. Moving to intercept. Mayday! Core breach imminent! Abandoned ship! Oh my god. Interrupted again. Um, so yeah, it is very difficult to get all of these portals closed in such a short amount of time. It really just comes down to the DPS race. And Krenum ships, or not Krenum, but uh, my cool ships are very annoying. Man, see, look how fast these things portal in. You do get a little bit more time on the optional for the third phase here. Uh, crap, Enterprise J is under attack. I'm going to head over here and clear out... Some of these, the hull is dropping. Let's do this, this, and let's put causal anchor on there. Now, if you were trying to do this as a coordinated team, you probably want to have one person over here with the Enterprise. Oh, there's the Anorax. You're going to want to have someone over here with the Enterprise making sure it does not drop down. So you can make sure to complete that optional. And you have the rest of the team going around and closing the portals. Uh, 
Okay, so I think we've got. I think we've got the Gen uh, Enterprise J pretty well protected at this point. So I'm going to go over here and help, help close some of these portals, take some heat off these guys. I mean, if you were in a coordinated group, you could have like one person aggro tank and get grab all the aggro and then have someone else. You know, someone else in a fast ship going around closing all the portals while you draw the aggro. That'd be a good way to do it. Enterprise power integrity under 50%. Give them a hand. No, that's not good. So apparently the Enterprise J was not completely safe here. I'm going to go help out. Yeah, but we already failed to close the portals. Man, that, we, this is actually a really good team, and we closed the, even the first two phases. Uh, we were able to close the uh, portal pretty well, but we were not able to do the optional on the third wave. Yeah. But since we failed that optional, might as well try to def uh, pass the optional with the Enterprise J, so we'll keep that one safe. There we go. We actually didn't fail it by too much. This was actually a really There's good team. Chance. Fire! We did it. We've stopped them. This time. Now we need to stop them for good. All right, and that is it. That is Battle of Procyon 5. And you can get uh, temporal marks. Now, it says choice of marks here, but it actually, I mean, it's only fleet or temporal marks. Usually these newer queues, they will give like a choice of like any mark while it's like the featured you know, while it's in the featured queue, you can get any kind of mark, but uh, this one you can only get fleet marks or uh, temporal marks. I'm going to go ahead and get the temporal mark for the daily. And, all right, so 115 marks. That's actually not too bad. Um, let's take a look at our score details here. Um, Enterprise, okay, so for Act 2, we got it at 100%, didn't even get scratched. For Act 3, got it to 54%. Um, portals closed in Act 1, yes. Portal closed in Act 2, yes. Portals closed in Act 3, no. That's the one we failed. And so the mark reward was 60 plus the daily. So there you go. Uh, yeah, not bad at all. 115 marks. Uh, pretty decently fast. It can. This is one of those queues that can go either very, very fast in an excellent group or can take forever in a poor group because... Uh, the enemies will keep pouring through the portals, and if you can't out DPS them, it just becomes a nightmare to try to close those portals because it's so easy to get interrupted. Um, but this group was fortunately very, very good, and that was actually a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, that it, it it's a lot of fun. Those optionals are actually very difficult, and this is only on normal. I mean, I could only imagine how difficult this would be on advanced or elite. Uh, to complete the optionals on those, you would actually need a very well-coordinated team with a very high DPS ships. Um, so, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But, I mean, as far as tips go, um, like I said, you, in order to meet the optionals to close all the portals, you need to spread out as... Uh, you can't just all go to one portal and close one portal at a time. You won't have enough time. You have to spread out a little bit and work on multiple portals at a time. At, I would say at least in groups of two, or if you can uh, solo one, if you have a high enough DPS, go ahead and solo a portal. Um, that will help a lot. And there we go, we just got warped out. And, and just to make it more complicated, while you're closing those portals, you also have to... Um, uh, you also have to keep the Enterprise J's hull uh, uh, as high as possible in the second and third waves. So 
you can, um, particularly on the third wave, you probably will want to have at least just one person dedicated to keeping the Enterprise J protected, whereas the other other people will have to go around and close those portals as fast as possible because um, it is very difficult, um, you know, to do that within the time allotted. Yeah, it looks like I had a server not responding. Oh, it went away. Uh, come on, load. You can do it. There we go. And we'll just head back to the uh, research lab here and just give my final thoughts on this queue. Um, so yeah, it was actually, it's it's a fun queue. Like I said, it can, um, you know, it can vary pretty widely based on how good your actual team is. If, you know, if, it's, if you have a good team, it can be a, a lot of fun and it could go very quickly. And if you have a poor team, it can be a nightmare because uh, you can get very much overwhelmed. It's a lot, very similar to the uh, Mirror Universe event where you have to close the portals and you can get interrupted very easily. And if you get overwhelmed, it's just very hard to come back from and it just makes the mission take a very long time. Um, and the, you know, if you fail the optionals, your rewards will go down. Um, uh, it, can, it goes down a little bit. Uh, it's not too bad. You still get uh, a decent reward at the end, even if you fail the optionals. But uh, of course, if you can pass them, it is a nice. Um, it is a nice little bonus of marks at the end. So, but the reward itself is pretty good. So, 115 marks if you do a reasonably good job and pass most of the optionals, like we did, and a reasonably fast queue. Um, I like that there's not a like artificial timer on this queue. Uh, I know some of the other queues that have like, you know, you have to protect something for 10 minutes or something along those lines. So no matter how good you do, the mission is going to take 10, 15 minutes, whatever the timer is. Um, at least in this mission, if you do well, you will be rewarded with, uh, you know, completing it much faster and, you know, completing the optionals and getting the extra marks. That is that is how I prefer the queues. Um, so, so in my opinion, this is a, actually a very fun queue. Um, the whole Groundhog Day <laughs> theme to it is pretty nice uh, in how, uh, how the timeline keeps changing. Um, pretty neat little idea, the idea there. And it seems to work pretty well each, you know, and you go through each of the three phases. Um, it gets progressively more difficult. You have to fight, you know, different types of ships at the same time, Krenum ships, not cool ships, um, and then the Sphere Builder ships. Um, and it's, you know, it's a good challenge. Even on normal, I, it was a pretty decent challenge, at least to complete the optionals. It's not the challenge of, you know, not dying, but just that, uh, just to complete those optionals is actually pretty difficult, even on normal. So overall, I think it's a pretty good queue. I, I really enjoyed it. It's nice to see the Enterprise J and the Taksu Tat, and I, I like how they, uh, how this mission actually fits in with the uh, storyline as well. The whole storyline going through the agents of yesterday missions and episodes and with Daniels and uh, fixing the timeline and you know the whole um, some of the episodes that directly lead into you know this mission where you are on the Enterprise J with the Taksu Tot um, and it, uh, I like that I like how they worked the the PVEQ in along with the storyline of agents of yesterday it worked well so I can say overall, it's it's actually a very good queue. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I, it it works well with the theme of Agents of Yesterday, and uh, it even has a pretty decent challenge to complete all of the uh, optionals within the allotted time. So there you go. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, so go out there, enjoy the uh, Battle of Procyon Five. Hopefully that helped uh, with a few tips there, so you can see what you actually need to do if you want to complete all the optionals. All right, everyone, uh, that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.